I'm going to show you a fantastic game between two legends of the game, Gata Kamsky and Vladimir Kromnik, in which a very spectacular thing is happening in the opening as early as move 10. And you definitely want to see it because it's a kind of idea you may even use in one of your own games. If you're interested, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more exciting content like this. And then I'm going to show you what happened. Gata Kamsky played as always, the London system is what he has been playing the last couple of years. Basically, after well, after he retired from uh, competitive chess, he made his comeback. He started to avoid a lot of opening theory, and he's one of the main specialists in this uh, setup. It's very simple to learn. After knight of six, you are placing your pawns on the dark squares. White's position doesn't have any weaknesses, and it's rock solid, but... It can also just explode any time, as we will get to see. Knight c6, knight d2, bishop f5, knight f3. And if I were black, I would recommend my students here just to play a move like e6. Simple developing move, enabling the bishop from f8 to get into the game. But Kramnik has a different opinion. Plays the ambitious move, queen to b6, attacking the pawn on b2. And of course, this pawn can be defended, but Kamsky played here the move D takes C5, and that's a very, very ambitious move, giving Black a choice either to recapture the pawn on C5, which is not too great because definitely you don't want to have your queen there, especially if you compare it with the situation one move earlier after a move like E6, Black is always able to recapture with that bishop. After queen B6, D takes C5, Kramnik decided to take the pawn on b2 and now you may have heard that you should never capture a pawn on b2 because there is a potential danger that your queen is getting trapped. Well, maybe that's gonna happen here as well. But first things first, white's pawns, they are really, really weak. They are about to uh, drop. Black has ideas to capture the pawn on, uh, on c3 very soon. So white has to act immediately. Played here the move knight d4. That's a good move because you're attacking the bishop. And, uh, well, therefore, the pawn on c3 cannot be uh, taken. Black has a number of options, and I'm pretty sure that Kamsky knew exactly what he was doing here, because he had actually played this position a couple of times in, uh, in online uh, play. Difficult to say which move uh, is the best. Bishop g4 is a very logical move to move the bishop away with tempo to hit the queen. And Kamsky fights for the initiative by counter-attacking the bishop and stopping the threat, attacking the bishop on g4. And now the bishop could go away, but white is also planning to bring the bishop out very quickly to b5 to pin the knight on uh, c6. This may lead to new problems, but look what's happening now. The board is on fire and we are not even at move 10 yet. Black play the move e5, counter-attacking both the bishop and the knight in the middle of the board. And look what Kamsky uh, does now. He played the move knight b5, moving the knight away and maybe setting up an idea like knight to c7. With a knight fork, you're about to win the rook. But it really depends what uh, what black is gonna do. I would black here to, uh, I would suggest black here to play a move like rook c8 to stop that threat. It's an important threat to, to deal with. But probably this is not what um, Kramnik really wanted because now white, apart from taking the bishop on g4, you can do that, but then the bishop on f4 is hanging as well. White can at least play here the move rook to b1, attacking the queen. The queen can't go anywhere. Pawn on c3 is defended by that knight. If you take on a2, white at least can force a repetition of moves. This is a very well-known drawing method in this uh, London system once black captures the pawn on uh, on b2 that's very interesting but kramnik had a different plan he didn't play the move rook c8 he captured the bishop on f4 allowing y to go for this move knight c7 but wait a second if you give that check king d8 knight takes rook black is going to take that pawn on e3 and look at that knight on d2 it's in big trouble you're about to take the other pawn the, the black the white king is in big big trouble here so apparently this is already lost for uh, for white let's take it back instead of the move knight to c7 this is the key moment of the game in which white 
came up with a very, very nice idea. And I'm hoping you're able to, to spot it. Just make sure to do so. I give you a few seconds to figure out what is the best move. Like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. And then you will see that Knight C4 is played. And you may think, what is happening here? The queen is under threat and the knight can be captured. But the idea is that after capturing the knight, the D file for the queen is open. And after knight c7, the king is under check and only go to e7 and it's queen d6 with checkmate. This is a very nice attacking idea based on the two knights taking away the squares from the uh, black queen. Therefore, after knight c4, Look at this queen, it really can't go anywhere, but oh wait a second, that knight on b5 is no longer defended by the bishop, so it can be captured, but this was part of White's plan. Knight d6 is a double attack, the knight can be taken of course, but the main idea was that the bishop can now capture the queen, and well, it's still a total mess in which everything is just hanging, both the bishops are, are still hanging. Uh, Black decided now to, to take the pawn, Maybe bishop e5 could also have been considered to attack the pawn on c3 and hoping to uh, to set up a counterattack here. Maybe a possibility, but black is still a lot of material behind. So he decided to take on c5 uh, Kramnik. F takes g4. Black has only two pieces, two knights for the queen. Played here castle and kingside to get the king out of the center to connect the rooks and hoping to launch a devastating counterattack against that white king, as white still need a couple of moves in order to bring its king into safety. White decided to take the pawn on f4, very logical move, but apparently much stronger is to fight for the initiative, not by capturing the pawn on f4, that opens the e-file for the rook to attack the white king. Much better is to play g5. This is also very instructive, you're attacking the knight. If the knight comes forward to e4, you take the pawn on d5, to attack the knight on e4. If you protect it, you're attacking it one more time with your bishop. And now black has a big problem maintaining control over its pieces. As the knight is hanging, if the knight goes away, the bishop will be unprotected. So counterattacking with rook 88 would be a clever idea. But now, very typical strategy. Once your material up, just give back the material to simplify. After queen takes e4, rook takes e4, bishop takes e4, the position becomes much more clear now black no longer has two rooks targeting the white uh, king and white is in this position an uh, exchange up and uh, should be able to convert it without too many problems once uh, the king will be mobilized the rooks will be connected that is uh, looking really great but it didn't happen don't forget it was just a rapid game that explains the number of mistakes from both sides e takes f4 was played rook f e8 check and where do you go with your king? That's the question. Well, Kamsky thought, let's go to the center. The king should be relatively safe here. Uh, it's a much faster way to uh, get the rooks, especially that rook from h1 also wants to join the game. But maybe he underestimated the danger uh, in which uh, his king is, um, is facing. And now after rook e3, the rook comes in. And there are ideas to go knight e4 on the next move with check. And then both the rook and knight are also attacking the pawn on c3. Bishop d3 back to cover that e4 square. And here Kramnik rushed with the move knight e4. And maybe there was no need to play that right away. How about centralizing that rook? The other rook, which was not doing anything yet. The rook is much better placed on the d file. And you can see that if knight e4 may be played on the next move and after bishop takes d takes e4 both the king and queen are on the same file and black is about to regain the material the attempt to run away with the king to c2 and i'm pretty sure this may have been uh, white's idea will just be met with another crushing move d4 so the idea is to open up the d file for the other rook and at the same time you really want to eliminate that pawn on c3 so that after that pawn is gone, you can come in with your knight to b4 to give a check, to attack the bishop. Black has tremendous piece play. It almost doesn't feel as if you're queen down. Okay, you have two pieces for it, which is reasonable compensation, but it, 
since black's pieces are exerting so much pressure, there's a very good chance that black is even able to regain more material. Didn't happen in the game. As I said, black rushed with a move knight e4, bishop takes e4, getting rid of that attacker, d takes e4, rook d8 is the plan to win the queen, but the king goes to the c file, rook d8, and now the queen goes to f1. Still, it's not looking great for the white pieces. I mean, your material up, but it still requires a bit of time to coordinate your forces. And, well, if black would go for a move like rook d2, d3, black's pieces are working excellently together. For instance, if you try to initiate the exchange of rooks, you take the pawn, king b2, one pair of rooks could be exchanged, but after rook c4, there are quite a number of checks coming. Maybe the pawn will come to e3, counting on the support of the bishop. The rook can support it as well. The knight can come in as well. Things are far from simple in that case because that rook on h1 is still out of play. In the game, there followed knight a5. Understandable that you're trying to install a knight on c4, but it's not that simple. White is first going to play here to move queen b5, attacking both the minor pieces. Black is going to protect it. And now the rook comes in to d1, offering the exchange of rooks. And this is the turning point of the game. Black is in deep trouble as white untangles in, uh, in this position. Black is unable to generate any counterplay. Rook e to d3 played. And now queen a4 on the board. So the knight on a5 is kind of stranded. There is no serious threat here and uh, very soon at least one pair of rooks and maybe even more is uh, going to uh, get uh, exchanged now you see also the pawn on e4 is under threat so there's no time to uh, protect that pawn uh, whatsoever you can't push the pawn because that leaves the rook hanging on d3 rook c8 was played but now it's rook takes d3 e takes d3 king takes d3 the danger is gone material is very clearly in white's favor Black's pieces are not working together. No chances of really setting up uh, some sort of fortress. White brings his rook into the game. The knight comes around via b7 after taking the pawn on a7 by white. The knight comes to c5 with check. King c2, pawn goes to b5 and white is going after that pawn on uh, b5. Rook b8, rook to b1, hitting the pawn one more time. Knight e4, just very simple chess. Rook takes b5 after rook c8. You can just continue with what you were doing already. You're trying to challenge the black pieces and black has never the opportunity to take a pawn on c3. For instance, now even the simple queen sacrifice giving back the material once again leads to an end game, which is absolutely hopeless with an extra exchange and a passed pawn, white is winning easily. So black went back with a knight to d6. Now the next step is to challenge the black pieces one more time. Rook c7, rook d5, intending to take twice on uh, on d6 so black moves the knight again queen a5 attacking the rook pr protecting the pawn on c3 rook e7 rook d8 now there are back rank ideas against the black king knight f6 back queen a8 threatening checkmate on f8 knight can only come to d7 and after queen c8 the knight is not very stable white is going to take it if the knight moves away then the bishop will be taken so this leads to more Loss of material for Black and therefore Kramnik resigned. But I thought this was a very instructive game and hopefully you also agree with me and you're able to get such kind of tactics into one of your own games as with the Queen on B2. There are always ideas of trapping the Queen. Of course, ideas based on Rook B1 are very typical, but in this game, this idea with Knight C4 was absolutely stunning.